Hello, hello. Linda White here with another edition of Shakuri's Time Capsule, a mini podcast where I wax nostalgic over foods, fashions, and fun from yesteryear. In this podcast, I thought I'd take a look back at something I think almost every one of us here in the Western world has had at least once in our lifetime, and that is a frozen meal, or as we used to call it back in the mid-20th century, the TV dinner. Now, before I start, I do want to give a shout out to a website where I got a lot of this information from. It's called thedailymeal.com. This is a great site. Not only does it have very interesting articles about food, but it has a lot of delicious looking recipes. So if you ever get a chance, check it out, thedailymeal.com. Okay, back to the subject at hand. Now, when you think of TV dinners, what do you think of? I think of the 1960s, 1970s, sitting in front of the television, waiting for the dinner to be done, because back then they were all done in the stove. The microwavable dinners didn't come out till 1986. But back in the 70s, we had to wait until they came out of the oven. They usually took, um, if I remember right, about a half hour maybe 45 minutes, and then you'd get this tray come out. It was a foil tray, and it had about three or four sections, and you had a meat, a couple of vegetables, and if you were lucky, you had a dessert, which was usually spiced apples, which when I was young I thought was the most disgusting thing on earth, or a brownie, which was a bit better, if not a little too chewy. But anyway, the TV dinner originally was created in the early 1950s, and they were inspired, believe it or not, by airline meals, because airlines were serving frozen meals as early as the late 40s, and they would serve the, the meals on trays with the three compartments, again, for the meat and two vegetables, so um, Swanson actually released the very first TV dinner in 1954. And that dinner consisted of sliced turkey, cornbread dressing, sweet potatoes, and peas. By the way, the term TV dinner itself is a trademark. It was originally the brand name for Swanson's Frozen Meals. But just like Kleenex and Hoover and Band-Aid, over the years, the term became generic. I read that during the first year that these things are released, 10 million TV dinners were sold in the first year. And this is back in the early 50s. So I'm guessing pretty much every household had to try it and jumped on the bandwagon. That's a big figure for back then, I think. As far as the healthiness of these dinners, well, obviously, we're not talking fresh health food here. They are frozen dinners. And the fact that they're frozen means that all the flavor in this food is going to get sucked out through the freezing process. And in order to balance that, they have to put in, yep, more fat and more sodium in order to make it taste like anything. And speaking of flavors, a lot of thought and research goes into the combinations of foods that go into these dinners, because when you think about it, not only do the flavors need to complement each other, but you also have to think about cooking times. Things like potatoes tend to take a little longer to cook, but some meats don't take that long and they may be dried out by the time the potatoes are done. So yeah, a lot of thought goes into these products. At some point, and I think it was during the 1960s, the frozen food manufacturers decided to go international with their flavors because up to then, I believe the um, variety you got in TV dinners is basically turkey, chicken, and maybe ham or something like that, or Salisbury steak, which is basically a hamburger and gravy. So they decided to start incorporating other ethnic cuisines. They had Chinese-themed TV dinners. 
They had German themed dinners, and they also had my favorite, the Mexican ones. Yum yum. Now these had like little tacos. I remembered、um, with the it was like a corn shell, but they were soft. The ones that I really liked were the enchilada ones. Oh baby, those were really good. And the side dishes to the Mexican dinners were、uh, Mexican rice. It was yellow rice with peppers in it, and I think there was corn also, if I recall correctly. It's been a while, but oh, I love them all. I'd also like to make mention of a cousin of the TV dinner, and that's the pot pie. Now, when I was young, that was a popular lunchtime treat. There was the chicken pot pie, turkey pot pie, and my favorite was the beef pot pie. Oh, I used to love the the gravy in the beef pot pies. So, who else out there besides me loved TV dinners growing up? And what were your favorites? Come on, I know you're out there, and I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a line at shakuri2 at gmail dot com. That's C H A K K U R I and the number two at gmail dot com. Or you're more than welcome to follow this podcast Instagram feed, and that's Shakuri's Time Capsule, all one word on Instagram. Looking for something to read? I have authored two books that are currently available on Amazon: Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Belle of Camden County. Both written by me, Linda M. White, are available in both paperback and digital formats. They both deal with the subject of racial identity. They're set in the Old South during the late 19th, early 20th century. So check them out. They're both on Amazon.com. And as always, I thank you for listening. God bless you, and until next time, adios.